So a very, very narrow wind here for the tempo in extra percent over the vapor supply in extra percent two. Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Welcome to my cabin. Now I've had a bit of a setback last few days. If you remember, I did the 10K last Sunday and it went okay, but I was feeling a bit locked up on my left side. It was a bit of a disappointing time and feeling a bit of discomfort. Well, it didn't really get much better through the week and I spent a lot of time sort of stretching and using the flare gun up there. But unfortunately, it didn't really much help much. And on Friday, when it was stormy, I got on the treadmill and probably tweaked my right hamstring. So now I seem to be doubly problematic on both sides so basically I've had to stop running over the weekend so I've had Saturday and Sunday off so I thought said today I do a bit of stats one looking at what are the most popular shoes and I'm defining that by the number of views on YouTube so I've taken 15 shoe tubers including myself looking at what are their most popular videos by views of current shoes and see what we can see so it provides some interesting insights into not only YouTube but also shoes and what people are actually looking for in in shoe reviews so let's crack on Okay, to see the most popular videos on a channel, here's what we do. So if I go to my channel, your channel, and then click on the videos at the top there, and then do sort by most popular, and then you get the most popular videos by views that I've done. Now, easy in my most popular video is the Pegasus Trail 3 Gore-Tex. And interesting, a bit of a theme here, because the second most popular one is the, the previous version, and the fourth most popular version is the version before that. So for some reason, people seem to like me sort of doing videos of me wading through streams, I think. And also I've got um, the Nike Pegasus Turbo Shield, which is another weatherized one. So four of my five most popular videos are all weather shoes, which is kind of amusing. And they're interestingly all Nike shoes. The other ones which are non-running here have got my Garmin Smart Scale one and my first run on, a, on my Myron Technogym treadmill which is actually a live stream. I think people must just search for that and make the odd comments. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. I've also got things like a sandal here, some of my stats one, what it takes to run a sub three marathon, my two part run ones, that's the most recent one and that was the previous one. And some interesting ones like what shoes to wear on the track. I think that probably reflects the fact that not too many people sort of talk about track spikes. So maybe people search for that. Adios Pro versus Next Percent 2. Anyway, well, so what I did is I took the... 10 most popular videos of current shoes. So the, I define that by a shoe that is currently still available on the vendor's website. So here in my top 10, Pegasus Trail 3, Gore-Tex, Vaporfly Next Percent 1, Tempo Next Percent, Zoom Victory 5 Cross Country Spikes, which is a bit of a niche one, Primex, Adios 6, Street Fly, Adios Pro 2, Adi Zero Pro, and Boston 10. Now, you might argue that the Street Fly is going to still rise up because that's a fairly new video. But anyway, I had to have some criteria of that. And so here's in my top 10. I've given them basically a score. So the most popular video, the Trail 3 Gore Tex, gets 10 points. So I've also done this with a selection of other shoe tubers in inverted commas. So I've selected, other than myself, 15 altogether. So we've got Ed Bud, Kofuzi, the FOD runner, Believe in the Run, Running Warehouse, Road Trail Run, the, the Run Testers, Seth, Alex Felitti, Run Like Heller, Ben Parks, Ben is Running, Running Man Sam. Now apologies if I missed any one out, these are, but these are probably the ones that I think are the ones I look to for shoe reviews and perhaps the ones that sort of do enough to actually get a top 10 of current shoes. So if we look to say Ed Bud, and you can also do the shortcut by just doing this sort equals P shortcut. So if I click on that, hopefully we'll go straight to Ed's ones. And if I filter by Ed, it, and you can see that his Ultra Boost 21 shoe, um, which although I think there's a 22 version now, the 21 is still available on the Adidas website, so I included that one. That's his most popular video at 50K views and his next percent two review video is his second best at 40k. So you can see that I've ordered these ones here and these are his list. So if we could pick another one here, which is Seth James Namore, who's probably got the most subscribers, all the people that do shoe reviews. And you can see that his most popular one here is the Invincible, then the Alphafly, and then the Mac 4. So it does change a lot because obviously the Mac 4 is one that I haven't even got. So I couldn't possibly do a review of that. And the Metaspeed Sky, I can't fit into them. And the Clifton 8 or the Ultra Boost 21, uh, they all sort of feature. But you can see it's the usual suspects. Alex Folletti here is an interesting one. So his most popular video, my rank ranking, I've done the Adios 6. It wasn't actually his most popular video, which is actually about the Puma Nitro shoes. Now what I've done is if you've got a video where it's about two shoes, are basically half the views. So in this particular case, see here is Adios 6 versus his Boston. 
I've counted that the Boston 10 would have had, say, 7K views and the Adios 6 would have had 7K views as well. But as he's already got an Adios 6 video, which has got more views, that's the why it's at the top there. And his Boston 10 one is sort of further down. And then I think this Puma one, because it was a three-way one, I've given that three ways. And because the Liberate Nitro was mentioned first, that just happens to be the one that gets 10th place. Here's the FOD runner, which is the guy that's got the same size feet as me, Andy, who I met recently on the video. I'll put a link up to it somewhere up there. Now, his videos are interesting because most of his top videos are actually comparisons. That shit makes it quite difficult to identify what was his most popular one. So, as I said in the last bit about Alex, I've had to basically do a lot of sort of juggling about with the views here and giving half to one and half to the other. And interestingly, rather ironically, his most popular video by sh current shoe is the Tempo and Exocent, which I think is one of the shoes he hated the most. So just goes to show that sometimes a shoe that isn't necessarily the one that you actually like can be one that is popular. And interesting here is Ultra Olympus 4. It's the only Ultra shoe of all these 15 different shoe tubers that made their top 10. But otherwise, it's uh, fairly usual suspects. Here's Believe in the Run, and also Tempo Next Percent is top for them as well. In fact, their top four are all Nike shoes. Do have the Clifton Edge in there as well, which is one I haven't tested on the Metaspeed Sky. And I never got the 1080 V11. I did get the 1080 V10, um, but didn't really think that was was interesting me enough to, to bother getting it. But again, it's the sort of fairly predictable set of shoes, I guess. Just all a different sort of order, I think, is the important thing here. Now, I'll go to Running Warehouse, and they're kind of interesting because I think Running Warehouse, perhaps the one that, because they're actually a, a, a shoe store, as it were, selling shoes. So they are getting the shoes basically ahead of the people like Ed Bard, myself, and the FOD runner, who are basically having to buy all their shoes when they actually come out on retail. So, interesting, their most popular video of current shoes is actually the Street Fly here, although it's well down there order <laughs> their most popular video ever is 1.6 million views on how to tie your shoelaces so it perhaps does illustrate that this the relative interest in shoes isn't perhaps as high as the general interest in running matters and you can see that you'd have to go down to their fourth row to find the streak fly but 96k views on the streak fly and that was basically before it came out just with people just looking to see about a shoe before it's even been released and they do actually have two videos, which I decided to omit on the Endorphin Speed 3 and the Endorphin Pro 3, which obviously haven't been released yet. So again, I thought I decided I would only include shoes which are actually are currently out, even if the videos were basically made before they did. Now, Road Trail Run is an interesting one. They're, they're, I'm not quite sure whether they are really a sort of a, a shoe company. They seem to get all the shoes ahead of time. So a bit of an offbeat one here. The Flow Velocity Win by Under Armour is their top video of current shoes. And I actually got that shoe and found it came ridiculously short. So I got the UK 13 and basically it was kind of rubbing against my big toe. So I had to send that one back. So um, yeah, I'll have to <laughs> read that video again to see whether they'd identified that. Otherwise I perhaps would have saved myself a bit of time and effort but getting that shoe. But it's interestingly, you got a shoe like the Gel Kino 28 there from Asics, which you kind of imagine is a shoe that's more popular than perhaps the shoe tubers give it credit for. I mean, there's a lot of people that are very loyal to sort of Asics and Brooks and companies like that that do these sort of more shoes that have been out forever and I think you know people sort of get fitted for a shoe and maybe just keep it in that one so it's interesting to see that one there is ranks quite high otherwise it's a fairly traditional set of shoes you've got a few slightly offbeat ones like the Speedgoat 4 from Hoka but considering they are uh, as the name says road trail run there's not really a huge amount of trail shoes in there so suggesting that really the, the road is where it's all at. Now, the run testers are a set of UK journalists and their output is quite phenomenal of late. I think the fact there's four of them doing it, um, plus they get a few other sundry presenters as well, especially on the women's side. So I think you know, if you add up all the presenters they have, they've probably got about eight, although it tends to be sort of Nick and Kieran in the main, I find, doing most of the shoe reviews. So interesting, most of their top videos aren't actually about any one shoe, but a collection of shoes. Perhaps it just goes to show that you've got uh, the best running shoes, the best running watches, the best running shoes, the best running shoes, the best carbon shoes. Maybe that's a sort of a tip for me. I need to do a, a best something and then you, you look at a collection of things and you get more views. I mean, actually the next percent two video here, which I think is that one, their top video on one shoe. It's a well down in their actual list of most popular ones, isn't it? It's quite interesting. And they do do an awful lot of um, comparisons between shoes. 
as well. So again, it was quite it was quite difficult to actually identify what is the most popular one. But I guess it's a fairly standard set. You've got the Adidas 40 Ford in there, which does appear in a few ones. So that's interesting because you wouldn't normally think of that as being a sort of like a normal traditional sort of shoe tuber shoe. Bit of an offbeat one is almost more of a lifestyle shoe in, in my opinion. No, I haven't actually tried it, but from what I've seen. Again, there, the Ultra Boost 21 is coming up quite a lot. Now, Run Like Hella, Emily Hella from New York is quite an interesting one because she's the only really basically female channel doing shoe reviews at the moment. I think there had been a few others, but she's the only one that seems to be doing on a consistent basis at the moment. And her most popular vi videos are kind of quite different. It's quite a hoker bias here. And in fact, she's the only shoe tuber on the list that doesn't have a top 10 with a Nike shoe in it, which is interesting. I think she does review Nike shoes there. In fact, um, there's a Nike Infinity run, but that was the, pre the original version, so it's discounted from my list because it's not a current shoe. And I think she's quite a fan of Hoka shoes, which perhaps reflects in the fact that she's got four Hokas in the, her top ten, and then three from New Balance. So, yeah, it's interesting how the different shoe tubers, well, they, most of them review the same shoes, but their popularity of each one comes out slightly differently. Now, Ben Parks is interesting to him because he's not really a shoe tuber, though he does quite a few shoe reviews. He doesn't seem to actually get sent any shoes, quite makes a point of saying he buys all his own, which I quite like that model because I think it, you, you can be then more objective. You can actually stand there and say with a heavy heart that, yeah, this is what I really think about a shoe. Especially, you know, and he is quite a good athlete as well, so he's actually getting through these shoes quite quickly. So, again, another one that Tempo Next Percent is his top um, shoe video but as you can see it's by no means his most popular video it only comes in at uh what are we here seventh most popular video at 174k views although that's quite a lot of views isn't it for a shoe review i think that's one of the top uh, videos of, of any of them really but yeah you get these more generic ones how to warm up how to run a faster 5k that all seems to be a very popular one his infamous running with a gopro in 2019 i think he did a shorts video on that um the other day it's almost like a reprise of it. I don't presume he didn't actually run the whole way carrying the camera because, I mean, it, it sort of cuts to him doing clips of it. I mean, I know having run with the GoPro, that is really, really tiring to run sort of essentially one-handed. I think he even Confusely kind of puts it away. It gives the impression he runs the whole way carrying it. But I think in reality, most of the time he's sort of carrying it a bit like a relay bat or something where he doesn't really notice. But again, he's been some more of an all-round sort of... Um, running a shoe tuber so he's talking much as much about training tips and his own races as he is about shoes but here is his list and quite heavily nike uh dominated um that's probably reflecting the fact that he's they're the shoes that he seems to wear the most but obviously then he has to decide what he's going to review based on what he buys so he doesn't have the most exhaustive collection of shoes but i think most of the ones that you sort of like have heard of in terms of most popularity are there but you know none of the sort of like the asic stability shoes none of the brooks sort of ghost um sort of ones like that either so yeah very much sort of like the racing shoes and maybe the hype shoes now ben is running ben felton who's uh, doing very well uh, both running and on his um a subscription count almost at 20k now now he's kind of similar to ben parksway not just the fact they're both called ben but it's kind of a very similar theme so they're both very good athletes or well, sub elite i'd say you're not really good enough to be actually sort of professional athletes but have managed to find a way of basically combining running with a sort of um making it sort of professional in terms of like youtube is their career now as such which is uh which is good to see it just shows you that you don't necessarily need to be the, the very best runner to actually make a living out of the sport. So it's just sort of a new wave of type of runners, I suppose. I haven't said that, he's still very good runners, and I think, don't think he's far from his uh, potential. But yeah, he's not likely to be making the Olympics anytime soon, I would have thought. <laughs> Maybe he will, but who's to say? But yeah, so he he's kind of similar. He sort of picks shoes to review based on what he uses. I think he gets sent some. Um, but again, it's very heavily Nike um dominated top five they're all nike and in fact six of the top 10 there are nike so um yeah it's interesting how that, that is going to come out in the overall stats which i'll show you soon now i was in two mind whether to put running man sam in but um, i did because he's always um, been a uh, person that's uh, commented well on my video he seems to have gone a bit quiet of late so i uh, hope he's still um, keen on doing stuff but he's been reviewing a lot of shoes in the last year that are still current so i thought it'd be a useful person to put in now he's a bit of a more of an adidas fan i think than a nike fan so it's interesting that his top three shoes are all adidas and in fact one of the few people to get a spike in the adidas ambition it's only a short video but it's got his second most popular video just unboxing it 
but I think that you know, those shorts videos sort of help to get yourself out there and uh, often I find with spikes there's not many people do spikes reviews so it, it can be quite a good niche I think some of my spikes ones and dragonfly ones have done quite well just outside my top 10 not to say I just do videos based on what they're going to get views for but you, you do sometimes wonder that if you do do videos on on the ones that not many other people are doing then a lot of people may be searching for them. I think that's why my Gore-Tex um, Pegasus ones come out high because not many of the other YouTubers seem to really cover them. But again, other than uh, the top three Adidas, you've still got a very heavy Nike count there. And the fact that Pegasus 38, I remember Sam really didn't like that one at all, but still got a good number of views for him. For him. So here's 40 runs. He styles himself as the everyday runner, which I think he'd be happy to admit means he's not quite as fast as some of the other people featured on this channel, but he's still a very keen runner and still a very good runner. I think he's run sort of close to 20 minutes for 5K. So I think often you sort of forget that he's actually a lot better than perhaps he's often makes out himself sometimes. But it's interesting that his top videos here have nothing to do with shoes. He's got these virtual running ones, where I think basically he's gone out in the forest or in London here and taken a, um, some footage. And the idea is that when you're on the treadmill, you can play this back and you have some nice sort of background to, to look at. And I've seen that on some uh, commercial treadmills actually at the gym that do exactly that same, that same thing. And I have actually used them. So it's quite, quite a good idea actually. His top video ever was the Pegasus Turbo Shield, which was actually one of my top videos. So interestingly, not many people actually got that shoe. It was quite of an odd one. It was like a Pegasus Turbo with a high top, very good for waterproofing, but a bizarre lockdown. You didn't really have any laces at all. You just had to put your foot in and uh, close that flap up there. Of the current shoes, and his top one is the Infinity Run 2, he did a in very interesting series where he took out all Nike's sort of like cheaper offerings, like the £50, £60 ones. And it's interesting that um, quite a lot of them actually feature here. So you've got the Revolution 5, you've got the Run All Day 2. And there's a couple of other ones that would have included, like the Windflow 7 here, which um, only didn't count because it's actually now a Windflow 8, so it's not a current shoe. But it's interesting to see that if you pick a shoe that not many people have done, then because these are basically quite affordable shoes, then there's people looking to see whether these are any good. So perhaps there's an element here that sometimes if you are looking to sort of like find a niche, then find some shoes that not other people have done and go and talk about them. It's also interesting here, you've got another one here that is kind of a bit offbeat, the Hover Phantom 2 for Under Armour, his fourth most popular shoe by views of current ones. So Kafuzi now, and uh, he's one of the most popular sort of running channels out. He's not far short now of 100k subscribers. So interestingly, his most popular videos are a while ago now. And I think it does show that if you've got a video that is of about a popular shoe, it will continue to gain hits for quite a long time. So his top video ever was actually about Nike running shoes in 2019. I think when he started his channel, he was very much focused on Nike. And then he had a bit of a uh, switch and started basically reviewing everything. But again, another one here that uh, his top video on actual name shoe is actually a comparison between the PEG 37 and, and Essex Nova Blast. Can't count either of them because they're not current shoes. So his most popular uh, video of current shoes is the Primax, which is only his seventh most popular video ever. So what I've done is I've added up all these scores, giving 10 points for somebody's most popular video by views down to one point for their 10th most and see what comes out. So a very, very narrow win here for the Tempo Next Percent over the Vapor Apply Next Percent 2 by literally one point. Both were in the top 10 of nine out of the 15 YouTubers, which just goes to show that there is a bit of a disparity between them, isn't it? Different YouTubers have obviously got different videos which are doing better than others. So the fact that um, nine here means that six of the YouTubers didn't actually have that featured in their top 10 at all. And if I suppose if you think, well, the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 and the Vaporfly Next Percent 1 are quite similar shoes and one second and one's four. So perhaps you could argue that the Vaporfly Next Percent line is actually the most popular but also I think of interest here is the top four shoes are all Nike shoes and in fact six of the top seven are Nike shoes and uh, you've also got another one there in ninth place the Pegasus 38 so and then the Adidas ones which are basically coming next and then the, the, the first one that isn't um, Nike or Adidas is the Ho Mac 4 from Hoka but that was only given by five of the 15 shoe tubers so a lot of shoes here, you can think if you scroll down, they've only been listed by one. Like you've got a bit of an old one here. You've got the Flow Velocity Wind, which I think was Road Trail 1, was their top shoe. My one was the Pegasus Trail 3 Gore-Tex, but nobody else had that at all in their top 10. And then uh, the, the Ambition Spikes there. 
that was one that was only mentioned by one. I think that was in Running Man Sam. Revolution 5 is that sort of cheap one that was in 4D runs. The Olympus 4 there was one, I think, that was in FOD runners. But otherwise, you've got things like the Streak Fly, which are sort of considered to be a hype shoe, but I think that's only really hyped by the likes of us. But it was only actually mentioned by 7 out of the 15. Now, that could be that only those are the channels that have actually got it so far. And that video obviously hasn't been out too long, so that's a fairly new shoe. So you can imagine that if I revisited this in a month or two's time, when more people have got these hand and everyone's had a chance to look at it, that one's likely to creep up, certainly to probably going to be at least in the top three. I think it would soon probably overtake the Invincible, I would have thought. And I think if you looked at this, um, the, these counts, the, the Street Flow videos are continuing to get views, whereas you can imagine that the Invincible and the Next% Percent 1 are now basically more or less static. But it's interesting, if you scroll down right to the bottom here, the ones that are basically getting like uh, 10th place by one shoe tuber you've got the pegasus 38 shield a couple of surprise ones like the endorphin pro 2 and yeah you think that's quite a popular shoe but it's uh, well down in the pecking order velocity nitro then he just makes it the hyperion elite 2 from brooks which is a bit of a damp squid i had that one and had to send it back so you've got an awful lot of shoes here you've got basically 50 different shoes featuring in the top 10 most viewed if we now look on brand scores now it's a massive win here for nike so out of a possible total of 825 points, they've basically got like a majority. So more than 50% of the votes, as it were, in, in commas, inverted commas, are for Nike shoes. So, and then Adidas are a clear second. Now you would kind of argue from this that there's very little in it for third place between New Balance, Asics and Hoka. Sarkoni and Under Armour are then coming up a bit behind and then the rest are almost noise. I mean, it's interesting, no... Um, interest here at all from on which apparently was voted the most popular up-and-coming brand or something last year in some poll but uh, on never seems to get any love at all from shoe jibs i've never actually had an on shoe but um yeah but a uh, puma of sort of like a lot of hype around their shoes coming back in but in reality no one's really that interested in looking at these shoes relatively i mean it's just a bit of noise down here at the bottom it's only actually in the top 10 of three shoe tubers and then quite low downs and he got five points overall you know literally some of these are as a result of featuring in one of the uh the top tens like brooks reebok and ultra only appear as a result of one entry um as i said earlier in the video nike appear in 14 out of the 15 shoe tubers the only one that didn't make it was emily heller um not to say that she doesn't review Nike shoes, but maybe people just looking for her for those ones. And these are um, this column here is the number of different shoes that were actually ranked in those top 10. So Nike have 17 different shoes in those top 10 videos or those 15 shoe tubers. And um, again, that follows a fairly similar pattern to the other scores. Adidas have got nine different shoes. Asics come next at six, then Hoka with five, New Balance four. And then just one and two is for the other one. So I think, you know, if there's any doubt that um, Nike aren't the uh, most popular brand by far, that's, uh, this kind of illustrates it. And Adidas are sort of well, well clear of uh, the rest for second. And you think, well, if you take away Nike and Adidas, the rest are almost just sort of fighting for noise, really. I mean, some good entries from these other companies. But, you know, in terms of like what people are actually looking for in the shoe reviews, then clearly... Nike and Adidas are by far the most popular ones. So just to finish off, going back to mine again, it's always quite interesting for me to look at these sort of stats because although I try to review shoes that basically I'm most interested in, it's also sort of amount of satisfaction when you get good views because you kind of think it's worth it. And then this Nike Pegasus Trail Gore-Tex one, I've had so many views, I've actually sort of paid off the shoe. It was about £110 for the shoe and I've actually earned more in uh, ad revenue from it than I've actually paid for it. So you're kind of thinking, well, at least that justified my buying it. That is a bit of an outlier. But yeah, why is it that that one is so popular? I think I think it has to be because I'm one of the few people actually mentioning it. So people looking for that shoe, they aren't likely to find it on some of the more popular channels. So perhaps they go and look at mine. But I do find with those ones that the actual view duration is very short. So I think I, what I tend to find when I put a video out, I get my, my normal subscribers and viewers looking at it and commenting. And then very quickly, it's sort of like the comments start to dry up and people sort of like view duration drop. So I think what then happens is that you get more views from like sort of search engines and stuff and people are not so invested in you as a, as a channel. They're just looking to get some quick information about a shoe. 
So that's kind of why I've recently I've tried to sort of front load my videos to sort of tell people what they perhaps want to hear. Is this shoe any good or not, according to me, rather than sort of leaving that to the end because you kind of think, well, a lot of the time people don't get to the end. People get, if they get to the middle, they're doing well. And also, I try to sort of vary it, like ones like this, are not just about any one shoe or my, or my running. You know, some of these stats ones, like the part runs, some of the analysis of what uh, sub three marathons, and that was all on about what sort of times you need to do in other races, like distances like 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, to be able to do a sub three, that sort of thing. And then we've got a few like you know, the track here with the Garmin. It's a bit different. The Garmin Smart Scale. I've got one of them. They're only about £100. So again, it was a good way of getting a little video out and probably have justified most of the purchases of that. I've got one here on some sandals, which I tried to do a run in one day. It was a baking hot day. Uh, distant memory at the moment. And they've got a few like cross-country spikes here. It's almost embarrassing to watch some of these older ones now because I um, didn't really have... Um, didn't really know what I was doing. I was a bit sort of shy. I think I still am, but um, my equipment wasn't that great. But, you know, you've got to start somewhere with any of this stuff. But some of my shoe-off ones here doing well, the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed. Some of my race ones here, like the London Marathon, always got a good one. The Stride one has been doing well for a long time. Although, bizarrely, I'm not really using the Stride so much now as it was then. But it's interesting now that with the Stride, that's the same Stride um, now that it was two over two years ago. So... I think a company there is sort of struggling to well, what is their next best thing? I mean, how, how long can you continue when you've only got one product that's now over two years old? So that's going to be interesting. A few of my treadmills here. That's always sort of very interesting. So some of the shoe obviously an X percent against the, the two versions of the next percent or the Adidas Adi Zero Adios shoes over the years. Those orange ones there are my originals. I used to run the Marathons in, not those exact shoe, but the same one in a different colorway. Some spikes testing there. Again, it's a bit of a niche thing, but if people are looking for that sort of content, then perhaps not finding it on more sort of the road running channels. So I hope you found this little insight into all to the most popular shoes interesting. So many different ones out there, so many people looking for information. So I think the conclusion for me is keep being yourself, pick up a shoe that you like the look of, and uh, if it's a shoe that not many other people have um, looked at, then maybe you're going to get more interest in some other ones. Anyway, so I hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe and all that. And see you next one. Bye.